Hey everyone, Joanne from Art Resin here, and today we are on location at the studio of artist Greg Benz. So Greg, thank you so much for having us in your studio today. We're so excited to be here. Awesome. No, I'm glad to uh, have you guys in the studio. So Greg works primarily on large uh, panels. He's an abstract landscape painter. So Greg, what are we working on today? I'm going to be taking you through the process of resining a large piece like this size. Great. We're looking forward to learning all of your tips and techniques. Uh, so let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is tape off the painting. Okay, great. So do you tape off every piece and, and why do you tape? Yeah, I tape the back off of every paint because the resin drips down the sides and creates a drip. So if you tape it, it catches the drip so you can peel the tape off and it's nice and clean underneath. Yeah, it saves you so much time, right? Yes. Doing it that way. Yeah. I use the blue 3M tape just because it uh, comes off nice and easy with the resin and I usually wait about 48 hours before I peel it off. And is there a reason why you're applying the tape with your panel like standing up rather than face down? That's just because I have so much texture on the front of my painting, so it just protects the front. Perfect. Okay, Greg, so your piece is all taped, and uh, so what's our next step? So next step is to figure out how much resin we need, but before that, I have it lifted off of the table just so that uh, when we resin it, it doesn't stick to the, to the table itself. Yeah, that's such an important point. So you're using some plastic uh, measuring jugs. Yep. Um, you can use stands, painter's pyramids. For a piece this big though, you probably need something a little bigger. Yep. Yeah. And the plastic, um, the resin will peel right off. So plastic is a good choice to use for stands. And then, so speaking of resining, uh, next, we're going to need to figure out how much resin we'll need. So how big is this painting? Okay. So this is 36 by 36, so we'll have to go to your website to figure uh, figure that out. Yep, so that's artresin.com slash calculator. Uh, and if you go there and enter the length and width of your piece, so in this case it's 36 by 36, the calculator will let you know how much resin you need and even which kit to buy. So for 36 by 36, we're going to need uh, about 1300 mil of resin. So usually if it's 1300, like I'll mix 1500, let's say, mm -hmm. just to kind of, just so I have a little bit of extra just in case I need for the sides or there's a little area that needs some more. So I'll probably do about 1500. So that's a really good point. We always recommend mixing up a little bit more resin than you think you might need. Uh, just because it would really suck if you, you know, poured your piece and you found you're just a little bit short and you had to stop and mix up more. So 1500 is a good amount. Great, so we're ready to measure and mix now. So we're gonna mix up double the amount that we that we said, just because I've got another painting on the side. Uh, so if you're gonna mix resin and you've got a couple pieces, it's much better to do them all at once, just because it uh, saves you time. And if you're babysitting them, you might as well babysit too. Right, that makes so much sense. Okay, perfect. So we're mixing up quite a bit. It's gonna be 3,000 uh, mil, like three liters, which is about 100 ounces. So that's quite a large amount of resin. So I'm looking forward to hearing your, uh, any tips you have for mixing up yeah, large so amounts like that. Something this large, I've got a drill with a, with a mixer on it. So I use that. It's just much easier, faster. Mm -hmm. So we'll pour it in and we'll mix it up. Okay. Show you how it goes. Sounds good. All right, so we are ready to pour our piece, but before we do, we need to make sure that it's level, right? Sure, yeah, so normally I'll, I'll just level the, the piece just to make sure that it's close, you know, because if not, you'll get some like uneven spots in the resin, so make yeah. sure it's close and you should be good to go. Perfect, especially with the texture and stuff, you want to make sure it's, it's completely level. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Great. So, so here we you go. ready to go? I am, are you? Yep. Yep. All right. So because you use that drill to mix up your um, resin, it incorporated quite a bit of air, so we have some sort of cloudiness, right? But that's gonna come out with the torch. Yeah, I'll use my uh, my torch and those all those bubbles will come out. You'll see them just kind of disappear. Perfect. So I try to be a little bit more careful with the, with the texture side of things, mm -hmm. just so you don't accidentally scrape anything off. 
So a piece this size, uh, it's manageable to do for one person, but do you find sometimes like working with a larger piece or maybe in the summertime when the heat can prompt the resin to cure faster, do you ever you know, need an extra pair of hands to help you apply the resin? Yeah, sometimes on the really large pieces, sometimes you need an extra pair of hands in the summer just because the, uh, the temperature will change the way uh, the resin dries. It acts a little faster. But usually it's manageable for, for me to do it. So now I'll go around and finish the sides. Mm -hmm. You can use um, a foam brush to apply to the sides, but I think the way Greg's doing it with a gloved hand really is, is the best way, right? It's just, I find it's easier and it really helps even out um, the resin, I find. Oh, that's so satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's one of my favorite parts. Mm -hmm. And for a large piece like this, like nothing beats a propane torch, right? Yeah, no, it, the bigger torch helps for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And it is incredible, like all the detail in the piece, like the resin just makes it Yeah, it really come brings to life. them out. Yeah. And have you always worked in acrylics? Yeah, this is all uh, acrylic and acrylic ink, lots of mixed media kind of textures and different uh, mediums. And then, yeah, then we finish it off with, with the art resin. So Greg, what's the next step now? Next step is to look around and see if there's any dust or hair or anything that you can kind of see through the light, like obtruding through the resin to pick it out so that you have a nice, like even finish. Yeah, looking in the light really, really helps. So Greg, I've noticed that you torched a couple of times. Is that typical for like a larger piece? Yeah, something this size, I'll, I'll continually go around 10, 20, 30 minutes at a time, just kind of continually looking after the bubbles, getting rid of as, as much dust and particles that I can, that I can get out of it to make it as clean as possible. Perfect. And then at what point are you ready to um, cover it and leave it and let it cure? So, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll get it as best I, I can until I think it's, uh, you know, pretty much perfect. And then I'll, um, I've got a big box over there that is the size of my table that I'll just cover it with. And uh, Greg said that he actually custom ordered, or you ordered that box, right? Yeah, so I ordered from Uline and mm -hmm. just to the exact size of my table and then just pop it on. Yeah, that is an amazing tip. Well, I think this looks fantastic. I mean, it was gorgeous before, but the resin has just amplified it like in so many different ways. It is absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. Yeah, I love how it just brings out um, the depth and the blending in my paintings. Like it, it softens the, the skyline, I find. Um, yeah, I, I, I love the way it looks. Yeah. One thing I meant to mention is that you use um, wood panels, right, for your paintings. Yeah, and that's, again, for the reason of using resin, um, if you use canvas, it's going to sag um, with the resin sinking to the center. When you use the wood panels, so you don't have that problem. It's just nice and, and flat and smooth. Right. Epoxy resin is heavy, so the um, wood really does have the weight to sustain it. Yeah, uh, especially this big. Yes. Yeah, and you'll get a nice, even, even coat. So this looks absolutely flawless, flawless pour, and I'm so excited to see it all cured and up on the wall. Awesome. Yeah, I can't wait to have you guys back when it's all done and I'll be babysitting it for the next hour or so. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, we'll be back in a few days to see the finished piece. Awesome. So it's been a few days and we're back to reveal the final piece and it looks beautiful. Greg, what do you think? I, I love it. I'm super happy how it all uh, came together. It looks great. Yeah, it's gorgeous. And uh, while we were gone, you took the tape off, right? Yeah, I take the tape off within 24 hours just because if you don't it's it's harder to get off yeah and your work is absolutely gorgeous to start with but the resin it just amplifies it the color the metallic shimmer the texture the horizon it just gives it so much depth yeah i really love uh the finish and how, how it brings out the colors and it just adds a, a, another kind of dimension to the work and if you want to, you can always sand the piece and then add another layer on of the resin just if you want to level out some of the, uh, the texture. But I actually like how it looks just with the, the one coat. 
Yeah, I agree with you. The texture just gives it so much visual interest and really it just makes me want to reach out and touch it. So <laughs> thank you so much, Greg, for having us to the studio. We loved being here. I loved learning from you and getting all of your tips and techniques for resining large pieces of art. I appreciate you guys coming and taking the time uh, to come to the studio. No problem. And if you have any questions for Greg, please leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to hit subscribe and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you.